Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to check the video out. And today we're gonna to talk about buying a bass boat, what you need to look for, some of the pitfalls you need to avoid. Um, I've had a lot of experiences in this, guys. I've had, since I've been a professional fisherman, you know, with the, with the, uh, the deals I've had with boat companies, ever since I've been fishing, I've probably had fit over 50 different boats in my career from the time I first started buying my first to the time I got sponsored by him. So um, I've got a lot, a lot of hours in a boat that I can sort of share with you guys from my point of view, uh, what gets a good value, what, what you need to look for in a bass boat. I'm um, real quick before we just get started here, guys, just wanted to remind you all, anybody interested in booking an on the water lesson with me, shoot me a uh, private message on my Facebook page, Randy Blockett. I'll give you all the info for that. And also please check out our lake map breakdowns at fishthemoment.com. We got a bunch of great lake map breakdowns if you guys are looking for some really good fishing spots, it's the best way to find one. I'll include the link in the description on that. Okay, guys, let's talk. I'm going to take you guys over and show you a little bit about my Skeeter FX, FX20 here in a second. But I want to talk a little bit about overall what you're looking for as far as if, you're, if you don't want to spend that kind of money on it. Um, a lot of it depends when you're, when you're wanting to buy a bass boat. It's... it's really trying to assess your wants and your ne wants versus your needs because there's a big difference in that and I think the first thing you have to do is you have to be honest with what what you're expecting what you're looking for in a boat what you need out of the boat because a lot of times you don't have to spend a ton of money to buy one of these top-of-the-line fiberglass bass boats you can get by with a, a used boat or a cheaper aluminum boat you know I ran an aluminum boat on the pro circuit for a year and a half love fishing out of the thing um, to be honest with you guys, I, if I, if I didn't fish tournaments, um, you know, I would either consider getting, you know, and I, I didn't need a, a, a new boat every year. If I didn't fish tournaments, I'd consider either buying like a U Skeeter or I'd go to maybe like an aluminum. An aluminum is a really good choice. If you guys haven't had a chance to fish out of one, if you don't fish a whole lot and you don't need to cover a lot of water, um, if you're fishing smaller bodies of water, um, you know, aluminum is a good choice because it allows you to get into a boat, you know, a lot cheaper uh, and than you can with a fiberglass boat. So that's one consideration there. Got the chickens down here at the bee. Um, so uh, <clears throat> first of all, you need to assess what, what you're looking for. The second is, um, you know, a lot of it has to do with if it's just you and the boat or if it's somebody else. I mean, if you fish with your girlfriend, your wife, or your kids or something like that, obviously you may need a boat that has a little bit more space in it versus if you're fishing just by yourself. So um, those are all big determinations in it. But I'm gonna take you guys over to the boat right now and I'm gonna show you some some features that you really may or may not need in your boat, but uh, it, it has a big factor in determining uh, you know what you need to look for before you purchase a boat. So let's take okay, a look. Guys, here's my Skeeter FX20 uh, bass boat here. I'm gonna start at the end and sort of talk a little bit, go from end to the front and sort of what you need to look for when you're buying it. First of all, let's talk about the motor. I, I got a 250 horsepower motor, obviously because I fish tournaments. But the motor, guys, you don't, you don't, if you don't fish tournaments and you're not interested in going 70 miles an hour, you really don't need a 250 horsepower. You can get by with smaller horsepower, so you know anywhere between a 50 horse on up. So, like I said, if you don't cover a lot of water and you're not into speed and you just want to fish, consider going to a smaller one. You can get a better value out of like a 50 or 75 horse on the motor. Now, one option that I would highly suggest for you guys is if you're looking for a boat, invest in power poles. I mean, power poles to me are a great investment. They allow you to be more efficient on the water. They protect your boat. You can trim the things down where they don't get, you don't get hit by boat docks. Um, it's just a great tool for fishing shallow water. So I consider if you're looking for a boat that the power poles are a good investment. Another thing you wanna consider is your battery setup. Now, one of the things I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of a, a tip here is lithium batteries in my opinion are the way to go because not only are they going to last you longer but they cut so much weight out of your boat so if i i, I realize they're more expensive than lead acid batteries but once you if you buy a boat and you plan on keeping it 
One of the best investments you can have is to get you a good set of, of lithium batteries. I've got the Dakota lithiums here. They weigh a fraction of what lead acid batteries do. This allows your boat to get up on planes so much more easy and you get more speed out of it. Another good thing when you're looking at a, tra looking at a boat, guys, get you a tandem axle trailer. Stay away from the single axle trailers. A tandem axle is so much safer. It allows your boat to track true when you're driving down the highway. You don't fishtail on it. If you do get a flat, you, you can keep running. You can just pull a, pull a tire off and you can keep going on one tire. So tandem axles are critical. Now the length of the boat, um, a lot of bass boats, a lot of with the 250s on, they're either 20 foot models or the 21 foot models. I prefer the 20 foot model because I feel that it's more maneuverable. I can get in and out of tight places better. If I'm fishing around docks, I can maneuver around the docks better. It still handles very well, uh, you know, the biggest water that I can get in. Another thing in there, guys, if you're buying, don't waste, don't waste any money on getting the hot foot. We talked about this before. If you guys have watched my channel, you know that I don't like hot foots. I think that it's a lot safer without one. I think it's better on your body. It's better on your back. Refer back to some of my videos on not having a hot foot, but I highly suggest you not having a hot foot in there. Also guys, don't waste your money on getting freaking $20,000 worth of electronics. Get you a good unit that has some down imaging, side imaging, 2D sonar, GPS for the front and back. That's what I would highly suggest. I mean, you can do everything you need to do with this in, in there. You can fish deep water, you can fish shallow water. It's a great deal. Storage is a big deal, guys. What you wanna do is when you're looking for a boat, make sure you got plenty of storage. That's one thing I like about the Skeeter FX20. You've got big, deep storages in it. Yeah, they, they're watertight. You know, you, got, it's, you can never have enough storage in a boat. And make sure your seats are nice and cushioned here. The worst thing you can do is have seats that aren't padded uh, correctly, uh, very hard on your back, so that's a big deal with that too. Uh, trolling motor, uh, one of the other advantage, one of the other pieces of advice I'll, I'll give you guys with that is, is spend your money and get a 36 volt trolling motor. Even if you're getting a small boat, like an aluminum boat with a 16 and a half foot or something like that, 36 volt trolling motor, it just gives you so much more advantage as far as being able to fish in the wind all day long much more efficient especially if you use the lithium batteries and also these step up plates are really nice uh, to have here too another consideration guys is you want to make you want to uh, you know definitely invest in the kill protector that allows you to pull up on rocky banks um, the hull of the boat is very critical you want a boat that has a hull that has a combination that provides a stable platform that doesn't rock side and side yet has enough of a V in it where it cuts that rough water. So that's one of the things I really like about the Skeeter FX20. So ultimately guys, it's just about figuring out what your needs are and what your wants are. Um, one of the, the, the buyer's remorse sometimes I see with guys that buy boats once in a while is sometimes they buy a boat that's maybe a little bit too much for them or they buy a boat that's maybe not enough. So try to take some time to correctly assess what you need in terms of of speed and size and the waters you're fishing and that type of stuff. Another thing out there, um, there, there's a lot of really good deals on used boats, guys. If you don't, uh, one of the things about buying a, a new boat or a new car like that, you know, the value goes down immediately after you drive it off the parking lot. So if you're if you're thinking about um, turning a boat over, you know, maybe keeping it for a year or two, I'd highly su suggest buying, you know, a, a, a really late model good clean used boat if you're thinking about keeping the boat for a long time like if you're going to if you plan on keeping it for eight or ten years your new boat's going to be a really good investment because you don't you know what it's been through you know how it's been treated and that type of stuff so that's going to be a big deal there so like i said i uh, you know the main thing about boats is don't and another thing is don't bite off more than you can chew i mean one of the one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want your bass boat to stress you out financially so make sure that you know the boat you that you buy that you can afford it where it doesn't take away from the fun of fishing so that's just a few of the the tips that i can give you guys that's been this work for me um like i said if you guys are looking for a great new boat or used boat i'll include the boat works link in the description they've got a great financing there too with summit financing in fact if you use my name uh, if you call summit financing in the link i provide which boat works uh, they they're they work with summit financing 
uh, you get a $100 uh, gift certificate to the boat, the Bait Works Tackle Store, so that's a good deal. But anyway, they got great selection of Skeeter, Camus, Bass Cat, uh, Express, great people to work with there. So hope it helps out, guys. We'll talk later. See you.